This is HBR News number 449, Redefining a Bloodbath. Rittenhouse chased off stage where we discuss the news of the week and give it the badger treatment. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Honey Badger Radio. Hope you guys are doing well this week and that you're uh, laughing at all of this absurdity, which is probably peak absurdity. 2024 is going to be lit. Um... But, you know, try to enjoy yourself so that you don't, uh, that you're not consumed by the craziness. Uh, my name is Brian Martinez. I'm joined by, as always, my lovely co-hosts, uh, Hannah Wallen, Dr. Random Cam, and my dog, Jojo. Um, who, and Jojo's probably the smartest person on this panel. So, you know, definitely pay attention to the dog because he knows what's up. We have a great show lined up for you guys this week. So please be sure to continue the conversations both in the chat as well as in the comment section. On this week's HBR News Show, we're going to be talking about uh, some news regarding Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, Google is changing, has changed the, let's say, the phrasing to describe the word bloodbath. Uh, and more, there's actually quite a bit more. So stick around, it's going to be a good time. And be sure to join us afterwards for the patron-only show. So, uh, you know, Gamergate 2 is in full swing, and so that means uh, lots of stuff about gaming and why it's a problem. Uh, we're going to be looking at this article from footprintmag.net called Green Nudges for Gamers. Can video games really encourage sustainable behavior? Because I know when I'm playing video games, the one thing that's on my mind is the climate crisis. That's what I want when I'm just sort of like unwinding for an hour. Um, because, you know, I, I shouldn't be allowed to have fun. I have to worry about everything constantly. So if you want to join us on the patron show to talk about this um, well, I guess this initiative or uh, encouraging of people to essentially use gaming or our hobbies in general to uh, nudge us in a de desired direction, you know, sustainable behavior, as Lucy Kehoe says. Um, and I'm, I think I'm pronouncing that right, but if I'm not, it's good enough. <laughs> uh, then you have to become a badger yourself by going to feedthebadger.com and setting up a monthly subscription. Five bucks a month will get you into our Discord where you'll be able to watch all of the additional content as well as participate in the conversations. And if you get a higher levels, you could even be a part of the panel discussion itself. Um, and if you don't want to wake up one morning to find that we've been yeeted from the internet, uh, at least the, the internet as the normies know of it, then please go to badgerfeed.com or um, honeybadgerradio.com where you'll find all of the archives uh, you know, for our content. Also, we are on Patreon as well. So if you don't want to do it through feed the badger you can do it through patreon um and shout out to the rumble gang really quick because we want to support alternative media so uh shout out to you guys give us some emojis and some of the the cool things that only people on rumble can do all right with all of that out of the way let us get into our stories so first I'm not wasting any time we're going to be talking about kyle rittenhouse so during a speech given on behalf of the conservative organization Turning Point USA, Kyle Rittenhouse once again found himself being confronted by an angry mob of Black Lives Matter protesters. Hundreds of protesters flooded the venue at the University of Memphis and loudly interrupted Rittenhouse's speech, which prompted him to cut his speech off early and skip to the question and answer section, which was also cut out as the crowd of protesters grew increasingly more agitated. Rittenhouse, as well as his service dog and the Turning Point USA staff, needed to be escorted off campus as the rabid crowd of protesters rushed the parking garage searching for them. Police and state troopers were needed to push back the violent mob who attempted to box in Rittenhouse and the Turning Point USA motorcade, attacking and spitting on the vehicles in the process. Thankfully, no injuries have been reported. To date, no arrests in the matter have been made. One uh, one quick correction, well, not correction, but at least point of detail. Uh, according to Kyle Rittenhouse himself, when questioned by a Newsweek reporter, he said, quote, the event was scheduled for 30 minutes. I spoke for 30 minutes, and then my security team told the coordinator that we were leaving after the question, sick and answer period. And then, and, and we left. I stayed for my scheduled time, end quote. So it's, it's not quite as bad as some outlets are making it out to be. The, the the mob wasn't quite able to rob the audience of what they came for, namely the, the 30 minutes of Kyle talking. 
they were only robbed of of, of a potential encore, so to speak. It yeah, it certainly wasn't as bad as what happened to uh, Martin Selner in Switzerland last week. I think it was last week when he had a scheduled talk about remigration, and the feds crashed in mere seconds into his talk. They shut the house lights off, bum rushed him out the building, and arrested him on the spot. So yeah, no matter how bad it gets, folks, it's never as bad as it is in Europe. But it's still it's it's pretty fucking bad. It's uh, an indication that Black Lives Matter has not gone away, not like we were expecting it to. They have you know, not like QAnon mysteriously went away mere moments after it apparently first appeared. Yeah, BLM didn't just mysteriously appear in 2020 for anyone who hasn't been on this scene. They've been around for, I think, 11 years, ever, ever since the, the Trayvon Martin situation. And... and they, they, they were, they've been boiling up in potentia in universities long since before then. And they, they've just been waiting in the wings, surfacing like, like a, a swarm of cicadas every election year, whenever the, their, their blue and on masters give them their pocket money and point them in the direction of their latest grievance. I, I, I'm not sure what their problem is this time. I, I don't think Kyle crossed state lines. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least not for any combative purposes. It's weird how the, the the same people turn a blind eye when hundreds, if not thousands, of armed invaders are crossing the state line of Texas, having shaken a barrier in a manner eerily reminiscent of another much smaller barrier being shook in Washington D.C. not that long ago. But hey. All I'm doing is pointing out hypocrisies, and we know how pointless that is, but uh, hypocrisy is a form of irony, and irony will always be funny. And yeah, they, all they've done is put Kyle Rittenhouse in the news again. If, if, if the event had carried on without such a disruption, no one would be talking about it. No one would care. The, the best these Marxist pitchfork wielders can possibly do is attempt to strike fear into the hearts of anyone else who stands up to them and, and their mob justice. And sorry, but you're not going to do that to someone with an assault rifle. <laughs> Certainly not when all you've got is a, is a pitchfork or indeed a skateboard or a wash bag. The, the, the dude doesn't need to, need to carry his own gun anymore. He's got his own security detail now. All you're achieving is making him look persecuted as he is, and yourselves look like persecutors as you are. Much like what the criminals in the Democrat machine are doing to Trump. Much to the disdain of those in the party who can see the writing on the wall. The, the, the skulls on your hats. Yes, folks, you are the baddies. And, and you are slowly but surely depleting your voting base of anyone with a functioning set of eyes and ears. But I guess that does still leave you with a critical mass of, of the cannon fodder that you desire. I don't know. Good luck to you. Gee, I do hope no one blows a bloody great hole in your bicep anytime soon. Best of luck. <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of typical. These are the people that, that uh, belong to the mentality that came up with trigger warnings for... for uh, subject matter on social media for PTSD that if you um, if you uh, say that you have it then you can also say people can't talk about certain things in front of you they have to put an asterisk in the middle of a word that you're still going to know what the word means but you don't see the word so it's not so bad and blah 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 and yet this is a this is a young man who clearly has it. Um, that's probably why he needs a service dog. And what do they do? They put him in the same circumstances that caused it. You know, maybe te te uh, it was a it's him, a he has a, a therapy dog named Milo. I, I'm yeah. trying to figure out what the breed is, but it is. Well, I mean, I think he has PTSD. From like that's having to I, shoot those people in self-defense. Well, and from being in the middle of, uh, if you look at that video, that is 
what a an, a a war zone looks like when it's citizens fighting citizens in a country where you don't have they're not military officially but they're militant and unfortunately the citizens they were fighting were just ordinary residents of an ordinary community right? they weren't militarized citizens but the attackers were they were militarized they maybe didn't have tanks they maybe didn't have uh, the types of bombs the government had but they were setting things on fire they were knocking things down they were engaging in violence against people you know, and they were threatening people's lives they were carrying guns and they transported those guns across the state line for the purpose of attacking that community and so you have this kid and he was a kid in a war zone defending himself against militarized attackers of course he has ptsd who wouldn't even if you grew up in a gang neighborhood you would have ptsd from that that was a life-threatening situation and they put him in another situation with all of the hallmarks of it except maybe the the visual of things around him being on fire i, oh. I have no sympathy none whatsoever for anybody who claims to be triggered by anything i've said on social media ever again all of you are fake every single one of you that uses those uh psychological psychobabble terms to try to control what other people can say in your presence you no longer have the right to be taken seriously claiming to be afraid of words because those of you who embrace the idea of trigger warnings for scary speech belong to the same group that did this. No sympathy. None. If you can do this to another person who did nothing wrong, but even if you thought he did something wrong, if you can do this to another person specifically for the purpose of terrorizing them, then you don't deserve sympathy when you claim to be afraid of something so minor as words. Yeah. So the thing I wanted to say about this is that um, um, I think that the schools bear a lot of responsibility for this happening um, because these students are behaving in a radical fashion they don't they clearly don't know that what actually happened and this lie about what happened with Kyle Rittenhouse and the people who assaulted him and and one of them even had a gun um it didn't it, it obviously has not gotten to the general public like a lot of normies and I know you're you shouldn't be surprised by this but a lot of normies think that he did exactly what the media said and obviously the media should be held accountable for that and i think that we all understand that and know that but also the 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 school they should have you know seen that this could be a problem and they should have done whatever they could to ensure that the students were informed but i think that the teachers the faculty and staff they also hate Kyle rittenhouse they're also commies far left whatever you want to call it progressives and they're okay with this kind of abuse. They don't care about people's like mental well-being. They lie about all that. They don't care about any of the things they claim to care about. They are revolutionary. Their mentality is revolutionary and that's all they care about. And so for them, uh, like Turning Point USA, which is probably as milk toast a conservative group as it gets, to them is the is the the absolute devil. Like it has to go, right? So they're already like way off base right off the bat. And that should never have gotten to this point and it 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 saddens me that 
in this country shit like that happens but we have to i think the takeaway of from this is that no matter how much of the truth we know it doesn't matter if the normies don't know and if they don't want to listen you know i'm reminded of what yuri bezmanov said <laughs> Once you've normalized a situation, you can explain, show them evidence, show them video, and they will still try to rationalize how that's wrong. And a lot of this comes down to their investment in their version of events. They have mentally invested in many ways. They probably physically invested. They have done things. They have hurt people because they thought they were bad and they can't reverse that. So, and when, and I just look at Kyle Rittenhouse in the same context that I look at what happened to Derek Chauvin. Uh, Derek Chauvin was put in jail under like ideological possession and fear. Like there were people who were like, if we don't convict this guy, our city's going to burn to the ground. We're going to be in danger. We have to do it. And they did it, even though it was against their better judgment, even though the evidence wasn't there. And the, the people in charge threw him under the bus and he ended up in jail. And then in there, he got stabbed 22 times by some like criminal BLM supporter that thought that he, even a, a criminal, a violent criminal, a violent felon in prison felt justified in stabbing this cop because the media told him to do it. So Kyle Rittenhouse is, I understand, justifiably afraid and probably traumatized. Can you imagine having to kill someone or at least having to defend yourself and it results in the death of people and then after that you are basically put in the the role of the villain like you are the bad guy and and like half the country maybe more hates your guts and you have to live here and try and you're like 17 years old you have to try to build a life for yourself i mean i can't imagine the strength it takes for him to wake up every morning and just get on with it I mean, it's, it's incredible. And I'm just like, I'm just deeply ashamed of, of the, our schools, of our, of our, um, our teachers, our media, the politicians, everyone who is just allowing this to happen. And they're not speaking out. It is like moral cowardice beyond much that I've seen, like in, in, since doing this show, it's an embarrassment. So I mean, that's all I want to say about that. I, you know, I, I, I was in a, a, a Twitter spaces, like right when this happened, I saw like a Twitter spaces on it. And there was a group of dudes and there were dudes in there that were saying that even though this is how bad the possession is, even though he killed like, or, or shot at and killed two of three like white dudes. Okay. Cause it was like three white dudes, right? Even though they were white dudes that he ended up shooting at. He was still, they were like, well, I still think this is white supremacy and racism. Like they were, they were just like, there was no convincing them otherwise. They were, they were set because they were told to believe this from the beginning. And, and once you, they absorb that idea and they can't let it go, like no amount of evidence will change their minds. And I'm, I'm just like, you know, this is just unbelievably thick for people to do, but it, but it happens. So it's sad. Um, I, I hope that he gets help, and I, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I know it's going to... I'll pray for him. That's all I can, I can... I don't know what else to do. But I hope that he, you know... Uh, it, it, I think this is just, like, absolutely shameful. Good thing about knowing he has a therapy dog is knowing it, it, that that comes with treatment. So he must be getting treatment for the PTSD. Um, it's not something that's going to go away. It doesn't... You can't make it better, but you can make it manageable, and at least he'll have that. But yeah. this is just I mean, they were the, the people in the spaces were still claiming he was crying fake tears. Like there was you know. the the cope, the amount of cope to try to paint him as the villain, just so that they can protect their ego, because that's what it is. People don't want to be wrong. They get their pride hooked up and shit, and they can't take a step back and say I made a mistake. They will. They will let people die and and like in mass numbers so they feel right. That's yeah. evil. I don't know what else. It's evil. It's the sunken cost, man. It's 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 worse than It's evil. the sunken cost. That sunken cost well, shit I, is I, a I, motherfucker. I guess, I, I guess the sunken cost is, is what is 
the main vector that allows evil to take over. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced of that at this point. It's, it's, it's what turns um, morally normal people in, into, in, into vessels of evil. Yes. Because here's, cause here's the combination. Yeah. You know, sunken cost is, is a. It's not so much an attitude as a sense of you know i i have to stick with this because right but in order to maintain this level of hatred it requires selective attention that information is not unavailable what happened the information about what happened is not unavailable the trial was watched by pretty much everybody everybody saw what happened everybody saw the testimony everybody saw the evidence and so people who repeat the myths about his situation, his uh, history and everything. Um, they're not doing it because they never got the correct information. It's selective attention, and it's a willful thing. It is not a handicap. It's not a disability. It's not the same as PTSD. People who are doing that they're not just engaging in sunken cost in regard to this situation, right? It's a whole political perspective. And and the, the sunken cost fallacy just doesn't cover it. Because this isn't the first time that their belief system has been confronted, right? It, it's the umpteenth, quadrillionth, or to quote uh, Big Red, the 50th billionth time. It, it happens over and over and over again. Your belief system being assailed by facts and logic and reason and you having to defend against those over and over and over again. If you don't have the spark of evil inside you, and I say the spark of evil as in like a conflagration that burns down cities, you don't hold on to that. I figured out not long ago, I don't think evil is malice. I think evil is when other people don't matter to you. They don't matter to you as much as your own interests and your own desires and your own wants. And wanting something to be true matters more to you than the welfare of the people around you. What is right and wrong, what is compassionate and loving and caring and connecting among people like none of those things matter to you as much as wanting it to be true that a system can exist that'll make it so that you don't have to work for a living because that's basically what all of this is about and the sad thing is that is so easy to sell to people that we have huge mobs promoting it, that we have whole systems run by people promoting it. Mm -hmm. That's that's heartbreaking. And yep. that's how evil spreads. The, uh, the... It doesn't spread through malice. It's It spreads through indifference. Indifference to other people's experiences, other people's suffering, and other people's value. And that's what's happening here. The uh, the banality of evil. Um, yeah. Eichmann in Jerusalem, a report on the banality of evil by H Hannah Arendt. Uh, for your reading list, listeners. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're so. going to move on to the next story because we do have a lot to get through. But let One us know what you guys think about this. Thing. Oh, yeah. It took an unfathomable amount of courage for him. And it probably takes it every single time for him to step up in front of a crowd of a of people and speak yeah and i will bet you that this young man will do that again even after this happened he is yeah he's like he's doing a tour so he's going to be going to a few places and uh he's going to face more um uh, opposition but like the, i mean yes that's commendable you know no. it, it is and i don't want to hear anybody else say or see anybody else say this guy wasn't courageous he was just a troublemaker because this proves that is bullshit. 
That's yeah. it. That's all I wanted to say about that. Yeah, he wasn't just courageous at the time. He's courageous to do to do what he's doing now, faced mm -hmm. with his, he's facing his fears. There are people who can't even face spiders. This guy is facing mobs, having been traumatized yep. by a mob. That's, yep. that's, that's mobs of shit. brainwashed NPCs. I was on that's stage really for like an hour, maybe, at ICMI 2019. Y'all should have seen me. I think all the color drained out of my face. I, I'm i not a public speaker. And I was in front of a friendly crowd. People who like me and, and listen to what I say on purpose for some reason. And barely could handle it. It took every ounce of effort I could I could put in just to be able to stay up there and not run away. Even though there was no threat at all. And everybody was going to be nice to me. And I knew it. I can't imagine how much he has inside just just to be able to do this in front of groups of people that are hostile to him. Yep. I have a great amount of admiration for that. Well, let us know what you guys think about this one in the comments. I did get a super chat. I'm going to read it really quick. Iggy Thunder sent us five bucks and said... Oh, I should put the, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the Super Chows. Let me, let me, I probably got some and missed it. Um, but I got a Super Chat. Yeah, I did get a couple Super Chows. I'll read those in a second. Um, from Iggy Thunders, but right before the show started. And he said, Brian, what do you call a Mexican who lost his car? Carlos. Or Carlos. This is Carlos? Sp Spanish people out here going, am I a joke to you? <laughs> Thank you, Iggy Thunders. Almost that almost works. <laughs> so, uh, Meredith G sent us su super chows. Unfortunately, um, I didn't have the super chows primed to show them, but I will give you a Badger Chan uh, while I read them. One for five dollars, and she says HBR News four four nine. Honey for the badges. Thank you. And then she gives another five dollars and says, Why would Cal Rittenhouse have PTSD? It couldn't be. The event of the war zone he found himself during the protest. It couldn't be that he was hunted down and attacked. Oh, it couldn't be the time he spent in jail. Most of it was in solitary confinement to keep him safe from those who wanted to kill him. And no, no, it couldn't have been going through a trial where he could have ended up back in jail. And maybe like Derek Chauvin, by the way. No, a 19-year-old kid is just supposed to absorb all that and needs to bow to someone offended over words. Yeah, it's infuriating. It is. It really is. Um, anyway, let us know what you guys think about this one in the comments. We have to move on to the next story because we have a few to get through. Uh, and I look forward to seeing your thoughts. So now, um, this one is a little bit sad. So Crystal Candelario, uh, who is serving a life sentence in prison, left her toddler alone for over a week while she went on a vacation. She blames her mental health for this decision. Speaking from prison in Cleveland, Ohio, she explained her actions to Noticias Telemundo, which is like a Spanish news station, emphasizing her emotional stress and previous hospitalization for mental health issues. Palanda Candelario insisted that her daughters meant everything to her, even, the, even as she recounted leaving her 16-month-old daughter, Jalen, unattended in like a... Um, she was inside of a um what do you call those little those little like enclosed you know cradle things um for 10 days she clarified that her ex-boyfriend was not aware of her plans and denied intentionally purchasing tickets with the intention of abandoning her daughter ken delario described her impulsive decision to leave as an attempt to escape stress depression and anxiety during her vacation she said she briefly considered checking on her daughter but ultimately did not Upon re returning home, she found Jalen unresponsive, leading to her arrest and subsequent conviction. Yeah, I think uh, 10 days would do it. Candelario's attorney highlighted her mental health struggles, including a previous suicide attempt and the abrupt cessation of an antidepressant medication to explain her actions. Despite this, though, the court deemed her actions as an ultimate act of betrayal, resulting in her life sentence for the tragic consequences of leaving her child unattended. So she found her she found her kid dead and and called called police. Like um 
It looks Let me... like. Ooh, 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 ooh. Something's wrong with my mouse. Uh. Let's see. Yes, I believe she did. Okay. So the um. The standard in most of the U.S., if I understand correctly, and, and this is some. This comes from me taking a course in 1994, I think, 1993 or 94, that um, had this as a sort of side discussion, where I I, I learned of it because it was uh, in one of the textbooks. Um, about psychiatric care, but the standard, the legal standard that I'm aware of for quote unquote, not guilty by reason of insanity requires that you not try to hide what you did because, uh, your argument for not guilty by reason of insanity is that you didn't even have an awareness of right and wrong in the moment or of the right and wrong of your actions in the moment. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that a person who is aware of right and wrong and understands what they're doing would be anything less than a monster for this. You don't take care of a helpless person and a baby is a helpless person for you know, like eight, 18 months is a year and a half, right? You got yeah. that right? Yeah. So, yep. so basically this, this kid would have been maybe old enough to crawl, maybe starting to toddle, um, depending on the level of engagement the, the mother had. Kids will walk slower, start walking uh, at a later age, start crawling at a later age and everything um, if their mother is not engaged. But this woman's family had 16 months to notice that something was wrong, and they should have. Yeah. Um, unless, of course, she was far away from her family. And, and well, that we don't know. We don't know. How we don't much know. I mean, that she was allowing the father to be in the baby's life or anything. Like we don't know any no. of that. But she had to have had people in her life, you know, unless she was completely isolated from people by, say, a, a circumstance. I mean, I don't know. If she was uh, employed, I don't know if she was um, a, a citizen here or if she was in the country as an immigrant, a visitor, what, you know. She's but, she's from, uh, her family is Puerto Rican, so she is an American citizen. So she's a citizen here. Well, mm -hmm. then her family's probably here too. Um, yeah. She's probably, she probably did have people around her who should have seen what was going on. I, like if that had been me, my my family would have noticed when I started to neglect a kid, and this type of neglect isn't something that just happens, uh, you know, out of the blue. Other things would have been wrong first. Maybe not neglect, but other issues would have come up first. For somebody to just snap and run away like that, and a a, a vacation and buying tickets and stuff like that, that takes planning, right? So there had to have been something going on in the background. But you don't take care of a helpless person for that long and not know that if you're gone for even just a few days, that that, that person's going to die. This used to be a routine thing that was done to, to babies that were born with severe or profound disabilities. And it's, it's actually one of the reasons that the first hospital in the United States for children born with severe or profound disabilities that uh, their family didn't have money for medical care, for professional medical care in the home um, was started because hospitals would do this to babies. This was, this was not, oh, 60 or 70 years ago. Um, that, that this was, I guess about 70 years ago, that this was, this was normal behavior to do just, just to people 
with severe or profound disabilities that many of which today are actually um, you can we can mitigate them or treat them we can make them manageable or even eliminate some of the disabilities um, so that the people who have them can live fairly normal lives like hydrocephalus which you can treat with a shunt uh, so that the the people who have hydrocephalus don't suffer most of the symptoms that a, a baby born with it in, say, the 1950s would have had, which would have eventually resulted in death. Um, and at the time that that hospital was started, a baby born with hydrocephalus would have been set aside um, and allowed to starve to death and uh, possibly completely ignored during that whole time. And it could take up to two weeks. So we've, we've progressed as a society to where we recognize that this is an abomination in terms of human behavior. That doing this to a person is absolutely horrible and absolutely horrifying. We just need to progress a little more to the point where when a woman has a baby... Her aftercare includes watching for signs that she needs mental health assistance and is not going to do something like this because of mental health conditions. And she's where she should be. And I can't imagine in what her more moments of clarity must be like. Because she'll have to live with this for the rest of her life. And what that baby went through was horrifically painful yeah. and terrifying. Well, authorities... But, uh, Go ahead. Well, I, I can't bring myself to just treat this as a women behaving badly story. This is a social failure story. We have to stop treating moms... Like they're just automatically perfect, and and yeah. start treating you know, like we've here we've been hearing about babies being killed because of postpartum psychosis and things like that since last century. Right, that means we've had plenty of time to put a system in place to help mm -hmm. protect babies from when something happens with mothers. To make them capable of doing something like this. Why haven't we done it yet? Yeah, I don't know. Apparently, um, Jalen was found in a playpen. So that was the word I was looking for. She was put in her playpen, uh, wrapped in blankets. And she was found surrounded by feces and urine uh, and extremely dehydrated. And the child lost a third of their weight during her mother's absence. So, um, I don't know. Like, she's saying that she had to get away because of stress. Um, and that she was on some medication. I think that there's a number of failures, but at least she was held accountable. We may never know the truth. But, um, it is a really unfortunate thing that happened, so. Mike, did you want to say anything, or do you want to move on to the next thing? Yeah, I've got nothing for this one, and I'm dead in Yeah, it's a tough one, right? <laughs> okay. Move on to the next story. Let us know what you guys think about this one in the comments. And, uh, yeah, we'll just go from there. So, you guys remember Jeff Bezos getting a divorce? Mm. And, uh... We, we joke, I joked about, I know I joked about it, that, uh, you know, his, uh, his ex-wife became like the richest woman in the world overnight <laughs> because she divorced him. Well, anyway, uh, Jeff Bezos, ex-wife, what, what is she, what is she using that money for? So Mackenzie Scott, the ex-wife of Amazon founder, Jeff Bezos is distributing a significant portion of her $640 million in charitable donations to organizations supporting far left causes. This includes providing funding to migrant advocacy groups, prisoner advocacy organizations, LGBTQ causes, and clean energy initiatives. 
Critics argue that Scott's philanthropy is undermining free market principles and promoting ideologies that oppose capitalism. So she's like funding groups with money that she got out of a big divorce settlement with Jeff Bezos and using that money towards like initiatives that will ultimately destroy the thing that made her rich. <laughs> um, some also view her donations as politically motivated, particularly her support for transgender athletes in female sports. Despite criticism, recipients of Scott's donations have praised her generously or generosity and the impact it will have on their respective causes. Scott's philanthrop philanthropic efforts have drawn both praise and condemnation, reflecting broader debates about the role of wealthy individuals in shaping societal change. Yeah, a br brief point of contention uh, to, uh, uh, to hop on what you were saying in the middle. Um, you, you said critics argue that Scott's philanthropy yeah dot 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 and i'll stop you there if if for instance we are to criticize george soros the very first step is not to call him a philanthropist or to call what he does philanthropy and the same goes for mackenzie scott more so in fact soros at least earned his fortune i think or at least some of it in theory mackenzie scott stole her fortune when when the state steals money, it is theft, even if you call it dark curtain. When a woman steals a man's money, it is also theft, even when she does it with the assistance of the state. To return to my point, philanthropy is a word of Greek formation, meaning love of humanity or love of humans. It's the opposite of misanthropy. And pardon my balls... But funding the darkest excesses of communism is, if anything, misanthropy. Funding transgender athletes in female sports doesn't help humanity. On the contrary, it just incentivizes men to denounce their masculinity, uh, masculinity being a kind of humanity. I know y'all don't like to hear that, but it's true. And yes, all that is a kind of communism. It doesn't, you know, it's, communism in, in, in the in the old school sense doesn't help the poor. It just destroys the rich. And communism in the in the modern gender sense doesn't help women. It just destroys men. S same with what what was it? Migrant advocacy groups. And yeah, we're, we're not we're not talking about folks like me there people who want to legally move to the US and assimilate to its culture to contribute to its economy to maybe buy a house and buy and buy all your delicious beer and uphold your constitution no we we're, we're, we're talking about venezuelan chances who flood across the border and steal old people's houses and then go on tiktok staring right into the camera with their dead shark eyes and inviting everyone else in in the world to to come along and do the same thing that's not helping humanity that's not it's it's not even helping the shitholes they came from all it does is empty their prisons while turning a first world country like the usa into a third world country well yeah i mean technically a second world country uh What's a second world country? Yeah, our, our vocabulary has already lost track of what a second world country is. But let me refresh your memory. First world countries are capitalist. Second world countries are communist. Third world countries are the ones that can't afford either of these ideologies. We list them in that order because when capitalism slides into communism, it tends to continue down the slippery slope into the realm of a failed state and if some criminal mega cunt like Mackenzie scott is trying to fund this downfall while she sits in her ivory tower drinking her mojitos and fucking her dogs i think it's pretty fucking rich of her no pun intended to call herself a philanthropist let alone whatever bizarre state of affairs has to take place for her critics to call her a philanthropist what she is, is a thief and a tyrant and a traitor 
and she should be suspended upside down in the town square while she is slowly eaten by rats in Minecraft. <laughs> if, if the FBI's asshole is listening, I, I mean literally in Minecraft. Not, not literally not in Minecraft. I mean literally in Minecraft. <laughs> Uh, Anna, do you have any anything? I think I think pretty much Mike said most of what needs to be said. Um But I, I will point out that this this is just a reminder, yet another reminder that everything that the so called revolutionaries in the US um are are thinking of as revolution going against the machine, going against the status quo, going against the establishment is coming from the establishment. It is completely manipulated. It is completely funded uh, either by the establishment or by the establishment making it possible for manipulated and um, brainwashed people or people who have embraced the evil of banality and and are perpetuating the banality of evil um to do so right that's that's where that comes from it's not real revolution it's not uh real it's not real uh, grassroots anything it's all being funded by the wealthy and the spoiled and and those who want power over you. That's it. Yep. yep. Well, there you go. If you if you um, essentially divorce a billionaire, you can use the money to, uh, you know, fund the destruction of our country because uh, you don't live in reality. You stole money from a billionaire. <laughs> so, anyway, let us know what you guys think about this one in the comments. I look forward to your thoughts. Uh, let us, okay, let us move on to the next story. So this one I added at the last minute because it just happened this morning, but I thought it would be worth bringing up. So you probably heard a little something about um, the Baltimore Bridge. So early Tuesday morning, a portion of Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed after being struck by a large container ship, leading to a chaotic scene. The collapse occurred about 1.30 a.m. Fortunately, it was late enough that there weren't a lot of people on the road at the time when the vessel hit one of the bridge's supports, causing the structure to snap and vehicles to plunge into the Patapsco River below. The impact also ignited a fire on the ship, sending black smoke into the sky. Sonar indicated that several vehicles were submerged in the frigid water with temperatures around 47 degrees Fahrenheit. Fortunately, the operators of the ship issued a mayday call before the crash, allowing authorities to halt traffic on the bridge. Despite rescue efforts, several individuals, part of a construction crew, remain missing. The vessel, identified as the Dali, was en route from Baltimore to Colombo, Sri Lanka, flying under a Singapore flag. As a result of the collapse, vessel traffic at the port of Baltimore was suspended, causing significant traffic disruptions in the region. Maryland Governor Wes Moore declared a state of emergency and sought federal assistance to address the aftermath of the incident. Um, as of now, unless something like recent came out, we still don't know the cause for the ship to lose power, which is what like the, the, um, the container ship uh, lost power. There's video all over like the internet of it, like cutting out and cutting back on like two times before the ultimate collision. So I thought this was worth bringing up um, because at the end of the day, I mean, so, you know, we, despite what, what we don't know about, like what could have caused it, um, mm. we do know that it was mostly men that were in there, you know, trying to rescue people, trying to address the situation and respond as fast as possible. But I, I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts on this bridge. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. it, it just, it it's like a sign of a, of the failing infrastructure. When you look at what's happening with trains, what's happened with planes, you know, it's it's like, it's chaos, man. Yeah, and uh, Hanlon's razor only goes so far. I mean, there's only so many coincidences you can encounter before you do away with Hanlon's razor. Is the one that says, uh, 
uh, don't account to malice what can be accounted to incompetence. But like, like, like I say, uh, there's only so many coincidences that can add up before you go, mm, maybe it's not. Uh... I mean, do, I, are there any maritime experts in the audience? Anyone who, 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 who could... Any who, pilots? Who, anyone, who, any who, pirates? <laughs> I... I, I thought it pertinent to ask that because, of course, I, I, I'm certainly no such expert. I don't think any of us on the show are. It's it's hard for any such expert to elbow their way through the fray when so many people are waxing lyrical as to what might be going on. When you look at the footage of the incident at eight times speed, it appears that the ship actually did make it under the bridge only to proceed to do a sharp turn to the right sharper than I would have thought any ship could do, uh, especially one that had apparently lost control. Uh, given the, the lack of friction between ship and water, you would think it would continue to drift in a continuous trajectory, as per Newton's first law, the, the law of inertia. An object in motion remains in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Now, maybe the sea itself and the wind dictating the motions of the sea, maybe that counts as the unbalanced force in question on this occasion. Like like uh, some kind of whirlpool spontaneously appeared directly under the bridge at the worst possible time. Or I, uh, maybe there's some quirk of how the steering works on ships that I'm not understanding. Like, like when you stall the engine on a ship, the rudder like snaps hard to the right and sends the vessel into a clockwise tailspin. I don't know. I just don't know. It's, it's just a bit weird that this has never happened before. Has it? I, 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 I know bridges have collapsed because of the wind or, or, or because they were built by feminists. I, 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 <laughs> I, I hey, uh, I don't want to burn any bridges here. You <laughs> did that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, 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 I know a fair amount of bridges have collapsed uh, during wartime because they were sabotaged by a single vessel. But I don't know of any bridge, certainly not one that size, that has been destroyed in one fell swoop just because a boat drifted uh, by the sheer laws of physics into one of its pillars. But like I say, I'm not an expert. If you are, dear listener, please do enlighten me. I would love to be reassured that this is all perfectly innocent. But if, if you're just going to go, re, you don't know what you're talking about, and then not even explain anything, if if after all we've been through in the last 24 years, wait, when was 2001? 20, 23 years. If after all that, you're just going to assume that this is all above board and there's nothing to see here, and the story we're being told is the, is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, then I have a bridge to sell you. Yes, this, I, uh... <laughs> this whole thing was a joke. I'm very sad that people have died, but fuck you, I'm numb to the world, and we can all die any day now, so we might as well Never laugh. too soon. <laughs> Never too well, soon. Well, so we got somebody in chat that says, Jim, Jim MCL says the port pod could have been in gear when they regained power. Uh, pod is P-O-D, port of discharge. Um, and it's the port where goods on board a ship are offloaded. Um, so it, it, I guess maybe that would have had, had to have created a, like a thing sticking out that might have caught the water. Um, I don't know. But the other thing is in a body of water that wide going under a bridge, there can be different currents in the water due to the land underneath so it's possible that the water was moving at a different speed on either side of the ship and when they lost power it's possible that the measures that that the um, captain normally would take to counteract as he's as he's uh, piloting the ship would have ceased when the power went out like there's just it, uh, all kinds of stuff could cause a ship to change direction when the um, electrical systems go out and the, the 
captain can't do anything to control the direction that the, the ship is headed. Just like if your alignment is off in your car, um, if you were to suddenly lose your ability to steer, it might veer off to the left or right. So I wouldn't attribute necessarily anything to that until more information comes out. I mean, it is also possible that it was something else. You know, the, the um, ship was steered in a panic or accidentally or on purpose or whatever, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the case. I so there are... Saying. There, there is speculation, and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with people speculating. I know that sometimes, you know, uh, there's like this, oh, don't assume anything. But like, we, we can't really count on the media to tell us the truth, can we? Even if it is something that should be relatively black and white. So we a couple of theories that are... To not tell us the truth. Yeah, we can count on them to not tell us the truth, exactly. Uh, within hours of that uh, that shooting in that Russian mall, we, apparently the media knew it was ISIS. But uh, yes, this yes. Uh, at this point, apparently we still don't know what caused this. Uh, not not this right disaster. now, right? Exactly. Just so I don't know. the the a couple of th theories that have gone around that that might you know one one is that it's a uh, DEI um, hire, and that that's only because of the pattern. You know, we saw the stuff that was going on with the airplanes. We, we heard about the strange suicide of the Boeing guy. Um, we know about like the other areas that, you know, have been sort of tainted by this DEI practices. And there are a lot of concerns um, regarding that. And it's entirely possible. We don't know, though, because apparently this is not from this country. This was like, you know, uh, coming here from somewhere else. But it might have something to do with the you know, other, other factors, right? The other thing is, this is just kind of weird, but like Andrew Tate, not that I think he's like the best guy to ask, but you know, he is a, a pretty powerful, he has a, a loud voice and a lot of people like listen to him. He said it's a cyber attack uh, on the boat. I don't know how feasible that is, but it is really strange that there was something very similar that happened in this film that was on Netflix called Leave the World Behind. Where there's this massive like cyber attack and all of these electric vehicles are shut off and it well there is a scene where a a freighter i think it's a freighter because i never saw it so i don't really know it loses control and like hits a beach and people are all running and shit and it looked very similar it's it's i'm not saying it's true i'm just saying it's weird it's a there's a there are strange coincidences you know and people had speculated when that film came out on netflix that it was a kind of warning. I don't know, but uh, those are the. I, I think that it it's there's probably a mechanical failure on on, on the part of the boat of some kind. Um, that is, if I'm being as charitable as possible to the idea that it's an accident. But when you look at a pattern of of incidents like these, you can't help because we are you know a species that looks at patterns. I don't think it's unreasonable to think that something fishy is going on so one thing we'll know um if if somebody fucked up we'll know if they're male because if they're yeah. male they'll be held accountable for it yeah it's playing the video is it supposed to what it's playing video with sound was it supposed to oh are you hearing the sound yes, yes. oh i'm sorry it shouldn't have been playing for the audience because I have it muted here. Um, yeah, but if the failure was caused by by a woman's fuck up, you know, we, we still might hear about it, but we'll start to hear all kinds of it's misogyny to to blame this woman, and you know, something else must have been to blame, and this happens all the time. It's no big deal, and blah blah blah. All of that will come into play if a woman uh, made the thing that that. Uh, failed or did the thing that caused the failure or whatever you know that that'll that'll be the how dare you criticize this woman and scapegoat her for this entire disaster it was you know the captain should have been able to handle it or these people should have been able to handle it or you know 
suddenly the people that went into the water to try to rescue people from cars or or, or uh, any other type of rescue, um, they're going to be at fault for having gone into the water and and uh, their their deaths will have been their own fault and so on and uh, it, it'll it'll all be it'll all be shame on you for for uh, caring about this so much. But of course, if it was a man, it'll be, well, you know, men are arrogant, men are this, men are that, and this man uh, deserves to be held accountable for every last aspect of this, and we can just, you know, blame it all on him. Yeah. On the plus side, I will say that there, the, the, uh, this could have been way worse, and it's a good thing it happened in the middle of the night. Yeah. Um. Like I, th I mean, there, there are probably some fatalities. We don't really have a final number yet. Um. I know that on the video you can see people driving across the bridge. Uh. But I think when it looked like it was gonna hit the bridge, the the um the um uh, men uh, uh authorities moved in really quick to try to like keep people from going on the bridge because they could see what was gonna happen. So I think that's good. Um. I guess we'll see as it unfolds. Lives. You know. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, they, there were definitely lives again. saved. What? It's playing the sound again. I can hear it again. What? Oh, uh, how? Uh, oh, oh, let me, let me, let me stop sharing that tab. Um, that way, because I think it's just automatically doing stuff. I can't yeah, there's right a, now. you can, you can download an extension, um, or install an insta an extension, I should say, on your browser to prevent those things from auto-playing. Oh Every yeah, so that's and you have to disable that to make a site yeah. work properly. But those sites yeah. with those news news um videos on them, it's worth it to prevent those from sabotaging. Automatically yeah. playing, yeah, that's super yeah. annoying. All right. Well, I'm sorry about that, but uh I don't think it affected you guys watching. Um anyway, let us know what you guys think about this one in the comments. Let me just make sure I didn't miss any super chows or super chats. I did not. Uh send us a super chow, super chat or rumble rant if you want to say something we're gonna move on to the last story we're on good time actually i i'm surprised so uh we're gonna be talking about blood baths uh only because this is particularly interesting so mike j brought this to my attention and he writes this in what should have remained a footnote during a march march 16th rally former president donald trump in, at like a rally he was hosting obviously warned of the consequences should china introduce their newer and cheaper electric vehicles into the u.s market trump warned quote i want to do the trump but I'll, I'll do it very well we're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line and you're not going to be able to sell those cars if i get elected now if i don't get elected it's gonna be a bloodbath for the whole that's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it, but they're not going to sell those cars. End quote. The mainstream anti-Trump media jumped at the opportunity and ran with wild, misleading headlines all centered around Trump. Term bloodbath and no further context to explain his rather mundane comment. NBC News warned, quote, Trump says there will be a bloodbath if he loses the election. Politico reported, quote, Trump says country faces bloodbath if Biden wins in November. And the New York Times added, Trump says some migrants are not people and predicts a bloodbath if he loses. <laughs> Aside from pointing out the hilarious misframing of Trump's words, what many people made note of was that the term bloodbath does not simply refer to a slaughter of a great many people. That might shock you. Um, as of Sunday, March 17th, if you were to Google the definition for bloodbath, you were greeted by its primary definition, which read a ruthless slaughter of a great number of people or massacre. But this definition included a second, more informal meaning of the word, a period of disastrous loss of reversal. Along with an example sentence for this version, a few mutual funds performed well in the general bloodbath of the stock market. Obviously, Trump was talking about this in financial terms, right? He wasn't talking this about an actual bath. No, no one's gone. Is Trump going to fill a, bl a bath with blood? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> so far, the only yeah, like car, like Carnilla. That was a woman. Um, <laughs> um, uh. this definitely backed up Trump's use of the term 
meaning a market disaster rather than a massacre for where many people die. This remained in place on Google, but here's where the story gets interesting because we already knew all this stuff. Until these sensationalist headlines began to pop up, at which point sometime after Thursday, March 21st, the definition on Google was changed. If one was to Google the definition of bloodbath now, you are only greeted by one definition, which reads, quote, an event or situation in which many people are killed in a violent manner, end quote. The example sentence was also changed to, quote, he allowed the protest to go ahead despite warnings that it would spark a bloodbath, end quote. Many have pointed out how they have dropped the economic meaning of the term and have also inserted a new example sentence that seemingly makes reference to how many leftists recall the events of January 6, 2021. Where were you on January 6, the darkest day in our history? Where were you? I mean, <laughs> that I was at home. Was, I almost went up there. There was something resembling a bloodbath on one particular stairwell, but all of that blood belonged to, say her name, Ashley Babbitt. But, and like, I mean, even the existence of an official dictionary definition of bloodbath or, or Google definition, which in either case is just an appeal to authority, just an appeal to uh, a kind of secular holy book, um, a, a, a typical last resort of the authoritarian to just appeal to, to, to an authoritarian book or just an authority. Uh, it's, it, I, even in, in that case, it still doesn't expunge all language of the art of figurative imagery. So much of our language is is made of of uh, 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 of terms from uh, from Romance languages like Latin and Greek, which mean a different thing, but we translate it into English to mean a thing. Or from Germanic languages, which we which we metaphorize into in, in, into a thing. You can say carnage as a poetic term meaning defeat, and, and the powers that be will assume you mean a bloody festival of meat. Because Khan, as in carnival, as in chili con carne, means meat. I, 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 I say assume, but I guess I mean presume, because because people will just worm their way around all these definitions before they find the thing the, the thing they want. You can say onslaught, perhaps in the naive assumption that your opponents won't reinterpret it as slaughter, and that's why you wouldn't say slaughter. You'd say something a bit more palatable like onslaught, but there's, there's not going to stop these people from being for blood, as it were. And I, and I mean that in a metaphorical sense. You, you, can, you can say there will be a purge. And that doesn't mean a purge of life. Like, like, like it meant once upon a time. It can mean a purge of ideological rot. Hence the term draining the swamp. You can make every effort to use metaphorical language and it'll do you no good as long as there are swarms of vultures circling everything you say in search of anything that can be taken the wrong way. Like, I'll be a dictator on the first day to mean maybe I'll consider one or two executive orders on the first day, but certainly not the record-breaking litany of executive orders that the Biden regime introduced on the first day you you can you can say heads will roll and and nobody thinks you're talking about a guillotine massacre not even if someone holds up a realistic prop of the severed head of donald trump as inappropriate as it might be you can say there's going to be a red wedding <laughs> no one could possibly be convoluted enough to, to, to recognize what that's referencing and then enter the world of fiction, pull out that cultural reference and then resurface into the world of reality as though no metaphor has ever taken place. Shout outs to Salty Cracker. <laughs> you, you guys really put him on the map with that one. You, you, you can say we need to fight like hell and only the most desperate smear merchants who use that phrase all the time could possibly hear that and think you're literally talking about flanking your enemies physically with a Macedonian phalanx and impaling them on a thousand pikes. But this is where we are. It's so pathetic that they think they can punk everyone with these cheap 
newspeak tricks. And the saddest thing is they can. To this day, people are still pushing the fine people on both sides, smear. The, he said, inject yourself with bleach, smear. I know it looks like they're getting desperate, but they do this because so many people will actually fall for these desperate plays and not just believe them, but continue to parrot them for years without it ever even occurring to them to do their own research and watch the footage for themselves. We are truly dealing with an army of retards, folks. It's it's an army of sheep led by a lion, as, as Alexander uh, said once. But but that lion is not Joe Biden. <laughs> it's, I don't even know what kind of animal you could call Joe Biden. A, a sloth, perhaps, a koala. We, we don't. We don't even know who. The, we don't even know who the lion in question is. It's not even Barack Obama. He's just another sheep. We're dealing with an oligarchy of lions, who who have the common sense not to show their faces, while while they puppeteer the sheep, in in into place. And they're not even lions. The f- fucking lizard people, in in the skin suits of lions, in the skin suits of humans. It is a Astonishing that they're still getting away with this. Stop watching TV if you haven't already, and is it more? Encourage your friends and family to stop watching TV. Fucking touch grass or touch rumble. dot com. <laughs> That's where the truth is. <laughs> they're not. They're not lions. They're emerald cockroach wasps. If anybody uh, knows knows what I'm talking about, um, that's that's the wasp that puts its larvae into into the emerald cockroach and turns it into a zombie. There are other um, similar bugs that do similar things. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, um, it, it, uh, if I, if I remember right, that's the one I'm thinking it, it parasites it. Um, and, and then forces it to, uh, yeah, jewel wasps forces it to, uh, uh, do what it needs for for the wasp to reproduce. It's really kind of gross, right? But that's what's going on. And there there is a particular type of abuse that human beings engage in that people from the outside of that type of abuse are just absolutely horrified by it. And when mothers do it, they get caught because they usually... Uh, they usually do it by poisoning their children, and then you know they the the kid has symptoms of some illness or another, and uh, then eventually medical care um, reveals the fact that the symptoms are actually inflicted and not a, a result of that illness, and and the mom goes to jail and the kid stops suffering, right? Or the mom goes into a mental health institution and the kid stops suffering. Or at the very least, the child is removed from the mother's custody. Except in some circumstances, the child dies. And that, that's when, when you find out that uh, actually the child never had this illness. And there's an awfully large amount of this poison or even this ordinary substance that in large amounts becomes a poison, right? And then, then there's another version of that, and, and it's the one that's perpetrated by the establishment, and they don't get caught as easily, uh, and they don't have the level of repercussion that a mother faces when she does it. Uh, and the reason that's the case is because instead of using physical ailment and symptoms of physical disease, they use mental illness and fear and so instead of uh poisoning you with with cyanide or salt or arsenic or any of these other things that can cause uh severe symptoms that 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 the medical community would eventually figure out that your illness isn't caused by what it looks like it's caused by they can make you sick, and they can make you so sick that you can't tell fantasy from reality just by psychologically manipulating you or convincing you 
to experience a phobia an, an irrational fear of a particular thing or person or or outcome or event that isn't even bad or may not be threatening may not be scary and we're seeing that in real time with this established attack on your ability to observe and evaluate and form conclusions on the reality around you by continually changing how things are defined, how things are described, what is considered real and not real, whether or not you're allowed to consider your observations to be real observations, whether or not you're allowed to consider your analysis to be real analysis. This is just another example of that. And it's called gaslighting. When it's done by one individual to another individual, it becomes easily detectable because there is no grand conspiracy uh, throughout the rest of the world to conform reality to the abuser's story. So you can discover that the abuser is lying to you and you can get help from an outside source to stop the abuser from from continually using lies to abuse you but when your abuser is the political establishment the media establishment right the educational establishment the business establishment the economic establishment in general where do you go who do you go to to escape your abuser where is the shelter for you to stay at where they can't touch you and where do you turn? You have to turn to each other. So it's time for people to start. Um, if, if, if you have time, just start archiving terminology in, in the archiving sites. Just look up dictionary definitions for words and save them on, on the Wayback Machine and archive.is and, and other archiving sites. Buy old dictionaries buy old thesaurus uh, buy old books and preserve them keep them safe put them in plastic if you have to because we are watching the tearing down of reality by the largest most powerful most empowered abuser we have ever seen and yeah, uh, it's true. not going to stop no is it more they're rest? psychic vampires stealing the energy from the kids thank you alex um <laughs> i just needed a clarification on what the problem is <laughs> there you go so uh, let us know like what you guys think about this. And also, if, do you use a different search engine? Do you, if you don't depend on Google, maybe you can give some suggestions. I use DuckDuckGo. I don't know if there's something better than that now. Uh, maybe you can let us know in the comments Brave. or uh, in the like. Brave. Yeah? Brave is a good browser to use. Brave, yeah, Brave. Brave. I use Brave, Brave browser, browser but we're talking about search engines. I use Brave, Brave browser, I'm using engine. that right now for this. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but for search engines, I use DuckDuckGo. I think Decenter, I don't know, I haven't used it in a while, but there was a browser called Decenter, but it was kind of like operating under the Chrome engine. It was made by the uh, Andrew Torba, who created Gab. Um, but I haven't used it in a while. So I don't know if that one's been, if that one's changed, but let us know, there's another one too. I think it's, oh man, I'm trying to remember the name of it. I think it's called Tor, it looks like a onion. Like we don't purple? talk about the deep web, Brian. Is that is that a deep web thing? That is a deep web thing, yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's like um I I did I took a break in my research last night and I, I uh to to interrupt that cycle in my brain i watched a couple of these videos and one of them was about this so it's like the only news article or the only news item i knew about <laughs> before the show today um because i've been immersed in 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 the 13th century and the 14th century and the 15th century for for the last week or two 
Um, but uh, in any case, um, V suggested using a, a VPN and telling it you're in another country. Brave has a VPN built in. Yeah. So it's yeah. so as though you're from China. And unless it's something about uh, what he he referenced Tiananmen Square, like it won't tell you about Tiananmen Square, but it will tell you all about what's going on in the United States right now mm -hmm. from a perspective that you will not get if you are in the United States. And and then if you want to look for information about, uh, you know, China, then you have to search as if you're not in China and so on. So uh, that 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 was kind of an interesting idea because. Uh, you could go through and you could get your information from both perspectives and then sort of start comparing and evaluating and come to a third conclusion all on your own that isn't necessarily dictated by anything that you've read, but is influenced by the differences. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah, let us know if you guys have any suggestions in the comments for alternatives to Google uh, and alternatives uh, to browsers or whatever. I, I use, like I said, a Brave browser. Uh, I search on a Brave, it has a search built in, but sometimes I use DuckDuckGo. I don't know if it's better or worse. I, I'm hearing different things. So let us know what you guys think. But now we have uh, arrived at the end, which is crazy because I got through like five stories and it's it's still within the time limit. So this is great. So we're going to look at this article now from footprintmag.net uh, entitled Green Nudges for Gamers. Can video games really encourage sustainable behavior? And we will see because, you know, uh, men enjoying things, well, there's opportunities to be had there. And we have to essentially nudge. At any time men are doing something and having a good time, the state or activists or women in general got to get involved. And that's kind of what this is. This is essentially like... Um, all of these, uh, I don't know, you could say groups that want to uh, control males, uh, men's behavior and and uh, especially when they're trying to, you know, uh, decompress or uh, escape the world, they're not allowed. So we'll see what they have to say in the article. If you want to join us, uh, you have to become a badger by going to feedthebadger.com uh, and setting up a monthly subscription or you could go to Patreon and start a monthly subscription there. And five bucks a month will get you into our Discord, at least like get you full access to the Discord. If you just want to see what it's like, you can go to badgernation.online and get to the free portion, which is still a, a decent amount of the Discord server. So check that out, badgernation.online. Um, and hopefully we will see you all there. And also, I, I, I would be remiss not to mention that we are uh, doing our monthly fundraiser. And if you want to support us there, then go to feedthebadger.com forward slash support to help us continue to give you this content that we try to do every week. And um, and and the the other thing is, uh, if you want to send us a message, you can go, go to feedthebadger.com forward slash just the tip and feed the badger. Um, and then you can send us a message and we'll be sure to read it on the next show. So tomorrow we're going to be bringing back Badger Pod Gamergate and I'm going to be hosting a Twitter Spaces Along with the show, we're going to be talking about um, the recent drama, unless something new comes out, which is probably going to happen, where uh, a BBC um, journalist said that the that the gaming space needed to be purged. I don't know if you guys heard this, but she literally said this today. And uh, we're going to talk about that on BadgerPod Gamergate. It'll be a Twitter Spaces event or an X Spaces, whatever Elon's calling it. So if you want to call in, you can go to the... Uh, follow my account at Honey Badger Arcade because uh, that's where I'm going to be setting up the spaces and uh, you can be a part of the conversation. So hopefully we'll see you all tomorrow for our the return of Badger Pod Gamergate. Um, with all that said, if you guys like this video, please hit like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, hit the bell for notifications, leave us a comment, let us know what you guys think about what we discussed on the show today, and please, please, please share this video because sharing is caring. Thank you so much for coming on today's episode of HBR News, and we will talk to you all in the next one. This are machines, dude, okay? They are literal machines. They are talking point machines. They are impossible to fucking deal with, especially if you have like, <laughs> especially if you have like a, a couple dudes who have good memory on top of that too. Holy shit, you're fucked.